Powerful, easy to use, and exceptionally transparent. Repitch sets a new standard for vocal tuning plugins. How Repitch analyzes audio is based on the fundamental principles of human pitch perception. And once you've tried it, we think you'll be amazed at how incredibly natural and undoctored Repitch's processing sounds, even with the most extreme edits. So let's get started. I've just loaded an instance of Repitch in my DAW of choice and captured a vocal. Now it's worth mentioning I'm working in Studio One, which is an ARA compatible DAW, but if you want specific information on how to capture audio in your DAW, then be sure to check out some of our other videos. But here you can see how the audio is displayed in the Repitch window. So essentially the vertical axis represents the pitch and the horizontal axis represents time, which depending on your DAW can be displayed either as seconds or bars and beats. Now blocks are placed around sections of the signal, which the Repitch algorithm identifies as being a single note. Now within the block, you can see the pitch trace and in the background, we have the waveform. So it's easy to visually identify what's happening in your vocal and where. Transitions between notes are shown as yellow lines and non-pitch voicings like S's or breaths are displayed in a dark green. To help achieve more natural results, repitch won't ever alter the pitch of those non-pitch elements as that's just not how the human voice works. So to start off with, let's take a basic look at the GUI and have an overview of some basic navigation. So by hovering your mouse cursor anywhere within the editor, I can use my scroll wheel either left to right or up and down to move. Also notice that we have this scroll bar, which we can click hold to reposition. And also we can drag the handles out to focus on very, very specific sections of audio. Now over here in this section, we have the ability to increase the actual vertical waveform size. If this is something that was recorded very quiet, we could quite simply bring this up so that the overview becomes a little bit more useful. Or conversely, if this is something that was recorded very loud and you wanted to minimize this, we could do the exact same. Now, in this section over here, we click, we have a zoom, which allows us to zoom the cursor based on the position, and this is happening horizontally. We have the same two options for the vertical section, but in this case, the waveform zoom over here is affecting how large the waveforms are behind the pitch blocks. Now, we also have the option to use our mouse hover cursor over here, or like I said, we can click a single click, and we can bring this out if we prefer to use the actual scroller. Now, for those people who have become accustomed to using other editors, such as Melodyne, you'll be happy to know that the zooming key commands and the drag to reposition key commands of Melodyne function the same, regardless of which tool you're using in Repitch. So for example, I'm on a Mac, so option and command allows me to zoom, and this is dynamic, both horizontally and vertically. And also shift and command, I can drag to relocate. So as a combination between all of these tools, this is how we can go about in terms of navigation. All right, so that's it with the basic overview. Now let's take a look at how we edit audio. Now a really good starting point is to use a macro, which can be selected from this drop-down list over here. And basically what happens is this applies the same tuning settings to all notes across your performance. So I'm currently set to manual editing only, but let's say I had something very specific in mind. I could head over to vocal and I could snap all to note centers 100%. Now this is going to analyze my audio. It's also going to automatically analyze and load the suggested scale. And now everything has been snapped to 100%. Now if 100% is a little bit too much, we also have another option where we can essentially create our own presets. So I'm going to click the macro processing settings. And here I could start off with a starting point of snap all note centers to 100%. And now I could find something, maybe I would just want to back off this a little bit. Maybe I want to choose 50%, or maybe I want to choose something like 75%. So not quite 100, but still giving us a decent starting spot. At this point, I can save this as a user macro setting. Quite simply, give it a name, and then it will be available to use in my drop-down menu. So in this case, I actually have one that I've created earlier in the user section to snap to 50 versus 100%. This could be useful for certain genres where we don't quite need everything to be absolutely 100% in pitch. But for this case, I'm actually going to head back to manual editing only. And in addition, let's switch our scale mode, which has been automatically detected, back to chromatic. So now we have all the notes available for us in terms of snapping. Now, once you've got past the macro controls, if further manual edits are needed, we have a selection of precision tools which are available to use. So first up is the selector tool. Also worth mentioning, if we 
hover our cursor over any one of these tools, you notice that they have a corresponding key command which can be used. Also, in addition to that, toggling to any one of these tools, for example, if I wanted to temporarily switch over to the scissors tool, which is S, clicking S again will return us back to our main selector tool. Very useful and very efficient. Now the selector tool is pretty much your bread and butter in terms of your tools that we're using to make adjustments. Let's take a look at it. Let's also bring down the intensity of these waveforms a little bit, something like that. So I can either click or drag across a pitch block to select it. Now when I do this, we have a couple different options in terms of what we can do with the selector tool. As you can see at the top over here, if I click, hold, and drag, I have the ability to decrease or increase the modulation of a specific pitch block. This is really great for just flattening things out, or perhaps I want to go the other direction and I want to increase the vibrato of a natural performance. Now in addition to that, click holding and dragging vertically, we're going to snap to semitones. Now as you can see, the further I get away from the original pitch that was sung, we have an indication up here in the timeline of the processing that's occurred. And as I move further away, it's going to get brighter and brighter. I can temporarily remove myself from the grid by holding down the Alt or Option key. This will allow me to make my manual edits entirely by ear. Now in certain cases, it can be really useful to make adjustments of the tilt. So for example, let's select this block. Perhaps this is a little bit too high for me and I wanted to actually decrease the modulation a bit and then I wanted to pull this down but I wanted to anchor this point. In those cases, when you hover your cursor over the adjacent blocks on the right and left side of the pitch blocks, you'll notice that if I hold down the Alter Option Modifier key, I have the ability to anchor this down while I make adjustments. And then of course, a double click to snap to a correct pitch center. The center note tool enables how much a selection of notes are being tuned. We can simply just adjust this slider until we get the result we're looking for. So let's readjust our position over here and let's make a selection somewhere covering the majority of this verse over here. Let's use a C key to switch to the center note tool and I'm just going to drag across all of these notes over here. We'll just scroll this up a little bit and as you can see as I push this slider up, these notes are being pushed closer towards 100%. And keep in mind this is relative. So if a note was already almost perfect, it will reach 100% in terms of being the correct pitch very soon. Whereas other notes that were further off, you may have to dial the slider all the way up to 100% for this to work. A really useful key command in repitch is using the forward slash key to addition the changes you've made. I won't find another. I don't want to know your name. Don't need your drinks, no. You can keep your number. I can't see this. Let's listen to this in context of the actual track. All right, so I'm happy with that as a starting point. I do hear a little something over here, but we're going to fix that in a moment. Now next up, I'm gonna move over to the draw tool, which we can access by clicking the D key. Let's zoom in on this section over here. Sometimes when you're analyzing a pitch block, you can see that the pitch trace just happens to be a little bit jagged. Now this can be caused by a number of different things, but at the end of the day, the draw tool gives us a way that we can really transparently and quickly smoothen things out. So perhaps this transition over here, and then maybe I wanted to make this just a little bit more even. Let's move back to this beginning section over here. I heard something that I wanted to take care of right over here. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna to temporarily toggle to the split tool. In a lot of cases in various different pitch editors, you may find that pitch blocks have to be separated because the algorithm has interpreted something as perhaps just an intense modulation or vibrato. In this particular case, that happens to be true. So I'm going to just put a little split here and a little split here. Now this has separated these into what I believe to be the intended notes. I'm gonna click the S key again. We will double click just to center this. And these ones over here, let's have a listen now. I'm gonna make a highlighted selection and use the forward slash key. I wanna know your name. Okay, that sounds good to me. Now in other cases, you may have an individual note that has quite a lot of fluctuation in terms of its modulation. So in this case here, what we see with the pitch trace. Sometimes in these cases, it's really useful to actually split these and treat them separately. So I've just split this and I'm gonna click the S key again and let's double click to snap our pitch centers to 100%. And in fact, I might also use the draw key just to take this little swoop out. Now, when I'm done this, I essentially want to reattach these together because even though I separated these into two different pitch blocks, I want them to still be seen as the same pitch block. 
So again, we will move back to our main tool. I'm going to make a highlighted selection, right click, and we have the option now to join selected notes. And now I can double click this and treat this as one specific pitch, which can be great for ironing out any kinks which sometimes appear after editing. I'm going to skip over the warp tool for now because this is something that we're going to be covering in another video. And then lastly, we have our pan and zoom display. Now, I've been using the shortcut modifiers, which allow me to use the pan and zoom display controls regardless of which tool that I'm using. But if you'd rather choose this individually, then you can do so simply by clicking. By default, it is the drag position over here. And then if we hold down the alter option modifier, then we get the dynamic zooming of the vertical and horizontal zooming at the same time. But as I said, for the most of the time, I just leave things in the selector tool and I use my key command modifiers that I'm used to. Next up, let's take a look at some of the controls here on the top of the header. So as you can see, we have undo, we also have redo. It's also worth mentioning that the specific key commands that you would expect to work, such as on a Mac, command Z for undo, shift command Z for redo, they're going to work as expected. And of course, that's Control-Z or Shift-Control-Z on a PC. Now, I'm working in the ARA editor version of this, so I don't necessarily have a bypass plugin option that I would have with a regular plugin. So in these cases where you want to listen to the before and after of perhaps the pitch correction that you've made adjustments to, we have the ability to activate and deactivate. So this is just a great way to listen to a really quick before and after. And of course, we can see the differences in terms of what happened here just by zooming in right over here. Last but not least, let's talk about scroll lock. So depending on what you're doing, you may want to actually disable the scrolling. So for example, if you want to listen to everything, but you really want to focus on this section, if I let this run from this particular bar, it would go off screen and repitch would just auto scroll. But if I lock this, now if I double click to engage playback, call me a pessimist. But maybe I'm a realist. Notice that I'm not losing my positioning, which can be useful. Now, another thing that can be useful for is, let's say we're working in quite a large zoomed view because I really want to maximize my screen real estate and see what I'm working on. If I have screen lock off, repitch is going to dynamically adjust and dynamically scroll my window. Let's take a look. Go ahead and call me a pessimist. Just noticed one of these jagged areas that I wanted to take care of. Let's hop over to the draw tool just for a moment here and we'll just smooth that out before we move on. But let's say that I didn't want that behavior to happen, but I wanted to stay in on that specific zoom state. In those cases, as I mentioned, we're going to back up a little bit here. We'll place our cursor. Let's lock our screen and now regardless of how zoomed in we are, we're not going to have any scrolling that's happening dynamically. I would have to do it manually. Maybe I'm a realist. And last but not least, of course, we have our settings section. This allows us to do things, for example, switch between bars and beats or time in DAWs that support this, and some functions in terms of checking to make sure your plugin's up to date, as well as locations on where the cached audio is being stored. Now, in addition to that, one of the amazing features of Repitch is its ability to communicate directly with Vocaline. And this is something we're going to cover in detail in a separate video, but for the basics of this, basically Vocaline has the ability to reference the audio that's within Repitch as the guide. So that means that we don't even necessarily have to render our audio in order to start making our timing changes with Vocaline. It's pretty magical. That being said, I think it's always a great idea to render and commit to changes. So I'm in Studio One here and I have the ability to render this file. Let's have a quick listen to see how it did. For more information, be sure to check out our website and we'll catch you for more in the next video. Maybe I'm a